Right, I'm now going to continue the video lesson on electricity and chemistry and we're going to focus on electrolysis. Electrolysis is using uh, electricity to break up reactions and to cause chemical reactions to occur. Here I have a simple schematic of an electrolytic cell and what you notice is that uh, I draw something really nice and clean and neat and I'm going to start uh, filling in the blanks as we go along. So first we have a beaker that is filled with a molten liquid or a aqueous solution. All right, so it's a molten liquid or an aqueous solution. All right, the molten liquid could be like lead bromide, for example, the aqueous solution could be a salt, all right, of like sodium chloride. So it doesn't really matter. Those are details that does not do not matter right now. So what really matters is that you understand that here you have solid, uh, you have solid salt that has been melted into a molten liquid, and you you have an uh, aqueous solution that means salt that is dissolved in water. Okay? So there we go. I'm going to erase that. Now, you're going to put in two electrodes. Electrodes are inert electrodes. Okay? You're going to have two electrodes and they're inert. And they're basically made out of platinum or carbon. Alright, platinum or carbon. You have two electrodes here. And the electrodes are connected by a copper wire, usually a copper wire, because copper makes a real good um, are real good electrical conductors. So you have copper wire. And you ultimately will have a power source connected to the copper wire will connect to a power source like a, like a wall socket or an, a battery, whatever it happens. So it's a power source. Okay, so what happens now when you turn on that battery or you turn on that power source? You can see that usually it's, the power source is drawn by a longer line and a smaller line. The longer line represents the positive end terminal of the battery and the smaller line represents the smaller or uh, the negative end of that battery. When you turn on the power source, I'm going to erase this now, what is going to happen is that electrons are going to start shooting into the wire and it's going to travel downwards into, up, into the electrode. This electrode will now become a negatively charged electrode. So you get a lot of electrons, and I'm drawing it not to scale, it's big, so you can see. So as the electrons get like gelled and packed into the electrode, uh, electrons get packed into the electrode, this will become a negative electrode. Negative electrodes are also called cathodes. Now this name is counterintuitive and it adds to the confusion, but remember folks didn't discover uh, electrons until much later and so they don't know how electrical current actually flows. Uh, you know, so in physics you still study that electrical current flows the opposite way from uh, what's actually happening. So as the electrons get jam-packed into the negative electrode, what is going to happen is that in the liquid or in the aqueous solution, positive ions that are near the negative electrode are going to get attracted to it. So they're going to start migrating towards and get in contact with the negative electrode. Now it is very important, and this is a common misconception among students learning electrolysis for the first time, is that when you turn on the battery, the ions doesn't travel from somewhere far away in the solution, 
far away from the solution to the negative electrode. It does not do that because there's just too many molecules and stuff inhibiting this positive ion from going there because there's lots of other, other stuff in between that positive ion and this negative electrode. But the positive ion is going to randomly move around the solution or the molten liquid and when it comes near to this negative electrode then it will start getting attracted and come in contact with it all right so that is one misconception that you have to eradicate from um, books or whatever whoever's teaching you uh, differently if they happen to do so so as the positive ions comes in contact with the negative electrode, the electrons are going to jump from the like, electrode onto the ions to form a neutral element. Okay? The exact uh, mechanism of that, we're not going to discuss it. So, uh, neutral elements such as hydrogen gas or other uh, metal, metallic elements, Right, like lead, metal, whatever I have, it's going to make those. And as this is happening, concurrently, what is happening is this side of the uh, electrode is going to be positively charged. Okay, these are not ions again. Okay, these are just positively charged, and this here will be the positive electrode. This electrode becomes the positive electrode. And this is called the anode. Again, I know the name's confusing, but that's how it is. And what's happening here is that negative ions or anions near the uh, positive electrode are going to get attracted to it and they're going to get into contact with the positive electrode. And as this happens, the electrons from the negative ion or the anion is going to jump to the electrode. And the electrons are going to get packed and going to get pushed all the way up through the wire and back into the power source to complete the circuit. But as the anion is, has jumped from the electrons jump from the anion to the uh, positive electrode, what is going to happen here is that you're going to create neutral elements as well. Okay? And these neutral elements are lot, lots of stuff like gas, oxygen gas, uh, chlorine gas, right? And usually it's for us at this level, they are just gases. But the key point is that they're going to form neutral elements, all right? And so, over here, they're also going to form neutral elements. Now, to bring this topic a lot deeper. In a molten liquid, I'm going to erase all this again. A molten liquid, right? When only the only thing in here is a positive ion and a negative ion, right? It's like, for example, if the molten liquid is lead bromide, the positive ion will be lead two plus, and the negative ion is going to be lead bromide. And what if it's just a molten liquid? What you see here is that uh, the cathode, the ele negative electrode, lead, silver, silvery lead or shiny lead is going to get formed here and it's going to drop down. And on the other side, you have the bromine anion getting attracted, the, new, the ones, the bromine anions near the positive electrode get attracted to it and it's going to form bromine gas and the bromine gas will kind of just fade out okay that's for molten liquid 
But when we talk about electrolysis that's conducted in aqueous solutions, this is where it gets tricky. And what you're going to see is that the same thing is going to happen. There will be two types of positive ions now, okay? There will be the positive ion from the salt and a positive ion from the hydrogen ion, the met metallic salt. And then on the anion side, you have the halide or whatever polyatomic anion in there, and you get the negative from the hydroxide ions. So this is the ions formed by the electrolysis of water. So the water becomes hydrogen ion and an hydroxide ion, and the salt becomes a positively metallic element and the negatively charged ion, okay? So this negative ion here is going to get attracted to the positive electrode, okay? The two of them, one from X and the other from OH, all right? And on the other side here, you have N getting attracted to the negative electrode and protons getting attracted to the uh, negative electrodes. And what's going to happen is that these two are going to compete. And the one that wins the competition will become neutral. The ion that wins the competition will become neutral. Okay? And the same goes for the other side. The ion that wins the competition, the anion that wins the competition, will become a neutral element. And what about the other one? Well, it's going to stay in the solution and nothing's going to happen to it. It's just going to accumulate, accumulate as the other ion gets used up. Um, yeah, so who will win the competition? Well, that's your responsibility to find out. And I'll guide you through that in class.